handicaps, socioeconomic status, crime, substance abuse, depression, etc. A man and a woman who unite biologically may or may not have children, depending on factors beyond their control. But the point is that a same-sex couple cannot thus unite. Therefore, the state has no interest in regulating their relationships. The smallest message of inclusion for same-sex couples in an institution that makes no sense for them would be coupled with another message, that marriage is about the desires of adults rather than the interests of children. When adults bring children into the equation by adoption or by other means, they are covered in other parts of law and bring with them a host of unique and complex situations that require their own considerations. They are different from those for the biological offspring of a man and a woman. All of the sociological evidence on this issue has concluded that the best interests of children are, all things being equal, unequivocally realized within a family unit that features a man and a woman, father and a mother. None of this means that same-sex couples, single people, or any arrangement of people can be a family to a child and be capable of raising that child successfully. I should know. My name, Mary Linda, was created in honor of Maria and Linda, two women who raised my wonderful mother. I certainly consider them to be a family, though it remains tragic that my mother did not have a father. But why should these loving, committed, emotionally attached and supportive women who share their adult lives not enjoy all the alleged rights that a man and a woman as a married couple can? For me, it's simple. It's purely based on biology. They can raise a child, but they are biologically incapable of producing a child together. I don't have to tell you the nature of their personal relationship. As the state, it shouldn't concern me. Similarly, I don't have to tell you my sexual orientation.
vote is the prime self inclusively. I have no doubt that everyone here has heard various claims about other people on the state line. No doubt you've heard many contacts from both sides of the issue, about you go one way or for the other. But we will not know conclusively unless we actually ask the people. As a member of those who have become the prime self. Okay, thank you. A referendum is something to do with the Karate State. It's going to ask uh, our citizens a specific question. But the law will already be waiting to take effect. If you want a referendum, I suspect you should go ask a referendum without the body of the bill. A referendum is an act that can have the effect of dividing our Who gets to be in the front of us and who's 
relegated to the back. If you believe marriage is between one man and one woman, you have that right. And if you do not, you also have that right. People should be free to follow their own beliefs and their own conscience without government standing in their way. Thank you. Chair, I recognize the gentleman from Rochester, Mr. Representative Crowe, to speak in favor.
respect your rights to live as you see fit, the right to free expression, the freedom of religion, your right to self-defense, your right to contract, the right to have a state not interfere with your right in your business at its heart, protects the right to be yourself. It is an offense of the individual against the all our state and a recognition that the state is the most intimidating threat to freedom. And so must be strictly limited and strictly watched until you get to the question of marriage. The logical inconsistency is glaring. Suddenly the state should have the power to dictate the terms of your most intimate and personal relationship. Suddenly the state should include your choice of spouse. When I got married, I went with my wife to St. Paul to fill out the application for a marriage license. I remember telling her I didn't think it was right that we needed to ask the state for a license to get married. The word I used was offensive. That sentiment was consistent with my fundamental belief in a limited state that leaves people alone as long as they aren't hurting anyone. How can anyone claim to support a limited government and then with a straight face tell a grown adult they cannot marry another person? This was the party of the small government and personal liberty. I've got a close relative in this game. He's been dating the same person for two years. They're ready to talk about marriage. Do I personally approve? Not necessarily. And I simply don't understand it. But one of the caveats of a limited government philosophy is that I don't have to understand it. I don't have to approve it. He's happy. No one is being hurt. His choices are his own to make. Just because you believe something is immoral, it doesn't necessarily, in fact, probably doesn't follow that it should be illegal. If you support the concept of the power of the state as limits, and that we are hurting, if we are hurting no one, we should have the will to live our lives as we see fit, please vote against the amendment, vote against the bill. The true small government vote is against this horrible decision. Thank you. Does the general deal with the first question? In the issue of time, I would not speak. The gentleman does not need it. Representative Deuce is recognized for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, members of the House. Having voted on the prevailing side of the question to divide Section 6, I move for your consideration. Thank you. 
here for the purpose of representing our constituents and not to put our fingers in the wind. Then I will right now push the green button so that we can divide the question. Thank you. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Manchester, for Representative Simmons, for the purpose of the parliamentary Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If you know as I know that this amendment that we're now being asked to provide was just drafted in the last 48 hours, <laughs> and if it was the intention of this to be a separate issue, it should have been brought before this body as a completely separate issue. And if you also know that we are not a referendum state, we do not put votes in front of the people, not votes on abortion, not votes on the budget, not votes on right to work, and this issue doesn't deserve any special treatment than any other difficult decision that all 400 of us are asked to make. So I urge you to vote no on the uh, motion to divide.
Savior. If you believe the Bible, then the hands are highly valued in Christ of the individual. We are not a referendum of shame. And remote human rights, actively the made law, the very slippery slope. The majority of citizens of the state are not in favor of repealing the gay marriage law. So if you believe that, would you please join the debate and push the red button? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If you know as I know that this amendment not take away anyone's rights, but that the same rights supported from those in marriage will be extended to anybody joining the civil union. You also know as I know that the majority of the Judiciary Committee voted uh, or is, is in favor of this one amendment. And you also know as I know that this Florida has a civil union component that the original underlying legislation did not have. And if you believe as I believe that this Florida makes the legislation a better piece of legislation, you now press the green button. The question before the House is for Amendment 1288 and House Bill 437. If you are in favor, we'll press the green button. If you are opposed, we'll press the red button. Voting stations are open for 30 seconds.
figure I can uh, rise to move the uh, floor amendment 1097H, the code, copy, lamber, government, lamber. I understand you, Mr. Speaker, and that, that was a requisite to my next motion, which is, is the will of the House that of the Chair. And that is, uh, I'd like to speak on my motion. It is too late to challenge the Chair's ruling on that. The, uh, uh, the Chair just responded to my request for the motion to open that order. Thank you very much. It was our second meeting open to further amendment. There is no limitation on the number of times an amendment can be brought. The chair's motion is effectively a challenge to the chair's ruling. It is a challenge to the chair's ruling. Technically, that's correct, but it substantively has a different impact. Does that have order? Yes. I can do it in the moment. Yeah. I am given by the Zen. But this is too bad because the word email, people work out. The gentleman does not recognize the speaker. The gentleman's request is out of order. The chair requests that you please take a seat. I would respectfully, speaker, Move. What is it that you just don't want to hear anybody speak? The member will suspend. The member is out of order. And you will please take a seat. I thought it was written as a motion. You recognize the motion that is out of order. I can recognize the challenge. Thank you. 
going to make a motion to suspend Rule 35 e so that we can hear this amendment, uh, which is the Lambert Home um, Coffee Amendment, which has been published in the calendar. It has been discussed. We were told it would be heard last year as part of this bill, and the, the people we represent who were told to be in this amendment in favor of it, or my constituents, are not going to have that amendment heard unless we suspend the rules. We, we, as part of the committee process, said that we were going to hear this amendment one way or another, and I believe it has the right to be heard. So please, we're going to suspend the rules so that we can have the third day on the turn.
person leans over to the other at a very general and says, Don't you think it's a good idea if we renew our contract? Or would you rather use the wedding box? Previous speaker mentioned about a slippery slope. We are indeed on a slippery slope. So I find myself on this slippery slope with the rest of you. And I look up at the top of the slippery slope to see where did we start? Where did we come from when we got here? And I see the first major assault on marriage and family that has no fault of worse. And I see the wrecking that has resulted because we've now had 30, 40 years, sometimes 50 years, to look back on the wrecking of that.
noted in her opinion that the law limiting marriage to heterosexual couples would pass the rational scrutiny test as long as it was designed to preserve the traditional institution of marriage. That's the closest we have to a Supreme Court decision on this matter. It is a at least the opinion of one justice that it is perfectly acceptable that we maintain the traditional meaning of marriage in our statutes. I want to draw your attention to what our current marriage law says. It claims that marriage is open or it's available to any two people regardless of gender. That was written by the proponents of our, our so-called marriage equality law. But you know what? In 457, I think it's section 2, it goes on to list approximately seven relationships which are prohibited from being married. So apparently, the marriage equality isn't completely uh, equal for everyone. For example, a person is prevented from marrying a sibling. You know, that marriage is not just any two people who love one another and want to spend their lives together. Like all of you, I trust. Um, I, I love my mom, my dad. I love my brother. I love my children. But I don't suspect there's anybody here who would suggest that it would be appropriate for me to marry my father, for me to marry my brother, for me to marry one of my children. Is there anybody here who insists upon marriage equality that would say that those kinds of relationships would be proper for the state to recognize as marriage? Well, of course not. That's absurd. I raised this question to my colleague from Edna on, uh, we were on uh, NPR a couple of weeks ago. I asked, explain why the state had prohibited those relationships in our marriage equality law. And he had no answer. But I can tell you what the answer is. And all of you here who I assume would agree with me that those relationships not be proper to recognize as marriage. And in saying that, I don't think any of you would acknowledge that you're, you're a, a bigot, a homophobe, or that you would, uh, you would hate people by making that judgment. Of course not. There's one reason, and one reason only, and that's because those restrictions are the express will of the collective judgment of our society about what is a proper relationship to recognize marriage. And that's it. There is no other reason for us prohibiting two brothers from being married under our marriage equality law. And I would say by the same standard, if we as a society can adopt a standard such as that, that otherwise is completely arbitrary, then we as a society can say that we will only recognize the marriages as we used to between men and women. And that the relationship between two people of the same gender simply is not what we as a society recognize as marriage. We have civil duties provisions for them, and the people are free to go about their business and live together. The gentleman will suspend the gentleman's time to expire. The time that he is allowed to finish his sentence, however, the time for those who advocate in favor
15 kids from the inner city school. And you know, I didn't understand I was eight years old. So I went home and I was talking to my grandfather. And I asked him about it. He said, well, I've had a similar experience. He, he lived in a little town in South Georgia, Quitman, Georgia. And he, back in the late 1930s, just before the war, he had a painting company. Now everybody that worked for him was black. My grandfather, I'm, I'm, I'm addressing the, the bill as a segregation bill. That's exactly what this is. And I was told that
and, and make it difficult and say, this house did its work. The judiciary committee did its work. I don't like it when people bring amendments that I consider frivolous. This is not a frivolous thing to me, and it isn't to any of us. But I ask that you let the committee's work come forward, and let's vote on the best bill put forward to this house. If you're for it, you're for it. If you're not, you're not. But let's not do it by a backdoor, backdoor way of cutting it and bringing something that was presented but was not presented with the changes. So I ask that you, that you vote in for reconsideration so we can have the committee's work in front of us and that we can take a fair decision. Thank you. The chair recognizes the general lady from Manchester, Representative Tibbetts. Well, your civil union is the fault. There's 
all that he did, whether you like it or not, it was death. So now, we don't know what hope he had, but to be saved, at least reconsider this, pass this amendment, then you have the opportunity, if the bill passes, at least the people that got married have an opportunity to have a civil union. Let's not take that away from you. So this is why I got up as a champion. Very important that we do the right thing. The damage was done two years ago. We can't bring that back to the 1800s. But if we do pass this, let's protect the people so they can have the civil union. We consider this, let's move on and get it over. Thank you. The question before the House is reconsideration of amendment number 2779. Are you, uh, the gentleman from Hudson is recognized for all of the
roll call vote has been requested and sufficiently seconded. The chair recognizes the gentle lady from Manchester for the purposes of parliamentary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If you know, as I know, that of the nearly 2,000 same-sex couples who have married since 2010 and generated nearly $100,000 in marriage license fees, that not one of them has caused the breakdown of a single heterosexual marriage in any way whatsoever. And if you know, as I know, that the basis of our laws should be about protecting life, liberty, and property, and that someone's faith or religion should guide their lives and not the lives of others. And if you know that those two people who love each other and want to legally join as partners in exactly the same way as those two people are, and that if the government insists on staying involved in the business of marriage, then marriage must be available to all people and not to just some people. And if you know that the bill that you will be voting on not only removes gay marriage, it removes civil unions. And finally, Mr. Speaker, if you know, as I know, that this is not a Republican issue or a Democrat issue, but this is about the people of New Hampshire. It's about taxpayers, it's about voters, it's about your sons and your daughters, your brothers, your sisters, your neighbor, your co-worker, and maybe even about the person sitting in the seat next to you. And if you agree with me, then you will join me in pressing the red Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> On the day my gay marriage occurred, three years ago, it was all 
ago. And as proud as I was, I would actually became only the second state to legalize gay marriage, same-sex marriage, not to the court, to the legislature. I am even prouder and happier today because three years ago, only 12 Republicans were on the side of equality for everybody. That number is up to 100 today. And I have just finished reading a wonderful new book, 1948, about the election of Harry Truman over Thomas Dewey. And every time you read a book, you learn something new. And I learned in 1948 that the party of civil rights was the Republican Party. That the Republican Party platform at the time the Democrats were not favoring civil rights until Hubert Humphrey overturned the 70 to 30 platform committee motion against civil rights. The Republican platform affirmed one of the basic principles of this republic is the equality of all individuals in their rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This principle is enunciated in the Declaration of Independence and embodied in the Constitution of the United States. It was vindicated in the field of battle and became the cornerstone of the Republic. This right of opportunity to work and advance in life should never be limited in any individual case. The Republican platform in 1948. As I said three years ago, we as a society sometimes take time to advance. Who would have thought when in 1948 the big fight was over whether or not we should allow lynching, that we would still be debating whether all people are created equal and are allowed to make their wealth manifest to another human being by dying or not? Who would have thought that it would take us this long? But we are here. In 1776, America.